कम गुड आफ्टरनून हैव ए सीट रोहन सो रोहन यू आर फ्रॉम मुंबई और बॉम्बे Yes, sir. Bombay was earlier named for Bombay. Excellent. Has it been for the good or the worse? Sir, uh, I think uh, Bombay showed the colonial part. Mindset, mindset. It was originally called as a Bombay, which mm. is a good way. Yeah. And now it is a Mumbai. Okay. So uh, you have, uh, in fact, economics is is the common denominator yes, in your optional BA and MA. Yes, sir. and cooking podcasts on cricket yes sir uh, then budgeting project for nashik municipal corporation yes, you have done so how did you uh, carry out a project for nashik municipal corporation sir during my graduation uh, i i provided i conceptualized one participatory budgeting project then i mm. shared uh, the concept note to the commissioners uh, of respective cities like mumbai pune and nashik So I got a positive response from Nashik Municipal Commissioner, mm -hmm. and then I was invited to present the uh, budget and concept, and then conceptualize for the Nashik Municipal. Budget. So did you ultimately uh, publish it somewhere in a as a paper form, or was it put into operation in any way? Sir, so I have given presentation, and also the conceptualization part was done. Mm. But later on, the it was not implemented yet since mm. the commissioner and also the regime was changed. Mm. Nashik Municipal Corporation, but I have presented to the uh, even the commissioner as well as the mayor. Okay, all right. Now, uh, what is your expectation of uh, the economy of this country after the slowdown or uh, nose dive during COVID nineteen? Sir, uh, certainly the COVID-induced pandemic has affected our economic. We are seeing uh, slowdown, and uh, we are seeing now the shoots of recovery. We can say there are few indicators like GST collection. The last month GST collection was 1.68 lakh crore. Oh. So there are certain indicators which are showing the signs of recovery. If the if the question is that uh, what are my expectations? I feel this recovery should be. Rather inclusive, and also it must be a green recovery where we where we also provide emphasis on the environment part. Okay, now what is census, and how it is helpful in policy making? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, census is uh, basically calculate estimation. Uh, census is carried out where the population of the country or the Our region is measured along with the population. Various other indicators like socio-economic indicators are measured. So it provides a, a evidence for policy making, and yeah. policy making will be a reflective of, of what is the current situation in reality. And also uh, there will be help uh, help in the estimation of various policy targets. Yes. Sir. So policy making when you talk about this, what are the essential steps in policy making? Sir, so first thing is uh, to assess whatever the uh, we can say what are the needs of the we can say a particular target or particular issue. Then we can assess the what are who are among the who are all the stakeholders. Then we can do a consultation among all stakeholders to know what ex what exactly they want. And also there must be some assessment about the revenue part, how much money we have to implement if we plan any program. Oh. so that is must be there and uh, after the policy preparation we it must be open for the public wide public consultation as well as the stakeholder consultation so that they will also provide their valuable feedback okay what is the next one sir then it is a uh, pub published and then it is implemented published means formulated and yes, sir, made into a law formulated or uh, it provides a impetus for executive to take it as a make and say the implement okay Now, uh, tell me, what is the strategic importance of Siachen, number one, yes. Andamans, Western Ghats? Yes, sir. Uh, Siachen is strategic because uh, the location itself. It has, uh, uh, you can say, the trijunction where the China and other Pakistan is also placed, and also India in, on the southern side. 
so one is one is that also we have experienced some incursion on the ladakh side so it is also important that we must provide a uh, good impetus for the border security of the sachin region considering the andaman andaman will be a crucial uh, if india pursues or india uh, aspires to be a net security provider and also it ha- it sees the cri- uh, c- critical role in the indo pacific apart from that uh, the western ghat so western ghat is important because of its ecological importance mm. considering uh, it is a biodiversity hotspot mm. it is uh, we can say the marvel of environment uh, in india so mm. we must protect it from ecological perspective okay now uh, what is meant by proactive form of governance reactive form of governance and inactive form of governance now if you are the collector of a district can you give me an instance where you are exp- doing a proactive kind of governance yes sir and uh, another way we you can give an example of reactive and one yes, inactive sir. yes sir so proactive form of governance includes the uh, preemptive uh, we can say measures hmm. or we can say the estimation of the any so give an example sir uh, i am come from mumbai and mumbai faces floods hmm. so proactive step Good. to avoid flood would be to cleanage of the we can say the canals or we can hmm. say the river bed which mumbai hmm. has like mitti river so that is one is the proactive step hmm. reactive is something which a post event so if mumbai uh, faces a flood Hmm. then uh, various municipal corporation body municipal corporation body provide some uh, we can say the suction pumps and etc hmm. so that is a reactive step we can say and inactive is like uh, taking no steps even if hmm. there is a crisis or event like flood taking no step is a form of inactive okay my final question is that what are the essential steps taken in managing an election by the returning officer so step 1 give it chronologically step 1 step 2 step 3 step 4 and so on sir are you aware about uh, the the process of election yes sir uh-huh. yes sir sir uh, while managing election the first step is uh, there is no we can say the workforce which election commission has uh, at the ground level so it is borrowed from the various state government or various the government bodies like teachers or other so first thing uh, estimation of what workforce we need and uh, we can say the inviting them and arranging them second thing we can say uh, what is the f- i said chronologically the day the election is announced the eci comes on the television and he announces that the election shall be held on such and such day yes, from that day yes, what thing it starts sir uh, from the announcement of the election itself hmm. the model code of code of conduct okay. it gets operational all right so well, that is the first step model code of conduct starts operating yes sir next step what is that yes sir so next is is about the uh, filing the nominations okay all right filing yes. of nominations after that returning officer must ensure the scrutiny of the nominations okay all right then there must be a uh, provision that uh, there is a provision that withdrawal of the application all right Withdrawal. after that uh, the final list of candidates is ready final list of the contesting candidates okay then yes sir so then the election date comes before that uh, returning officer must ensure the security arrangement and other no there is something more which is after the list of the contesting candidates is published what is the next step which again is done done by the ro sir i think the anything uh, is allowed allotted or allocated yes, to them yes, what sir. is that sir the uh, allocation of the the evm evm machines symbols symbols okay, <laughs> the okay then after the allot- allotting the symbols then what is the next step sir i think it is about the release of the electoral i mean electoral roll is already released but the candidates roll i mean list is released yeah that is done the allocation okay of the evm we can say So no, then are, then next step then the carrying of elections isn't yes, it the polling so first yes, of all polling parties have to be constituted yes, na yes, sir. you s- started with the, that thing itself that that the polling parties you need yes, to have a list of the people so then polling parties yes, and then what is the next thing on the day of the poll 
what what is done then on the day of the poll sir uh, on the day of the poll the security arrangement was the okay all right so that there is no instances of hmm. some uh, hmm. money and muscle talk okay right? okay correct and then then sir uh, security to i mean move the election voting machines to uh, so the poll will be conducted na yes. the entire day will be polled poll so will that be is the next yes. step na and then after that your your point which you are saying that yes. the evms have to be shifted to the yes. strong rooms yes. and then sir then the counting of votes yeah yes. oh. Actually, you know about elections uh, in great detail. <laughs> uh, how did you learn about elections? Reading or some experience? Sir, I think the democracy, democratic country we have elections are going on in some other part of country at some other level. So it comes in regularly in news. So by reading and yes, sir. listening to the news. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Uh, you just mentioned Mum uh, Mumbai gets uh, flooded. Yes, Now, sir. what are the reasons uh, that Mumbai gets flooded very often? Sir, I think there are natural reasons are two. One is the heavy rainfall which Mumbai sees from the onset of monsoon, and second thing is since it is coastal city, surrounded from three lines by sea, uh, floods occur when there is a confluence of two factors: high tide and High downpour of the rain, so these are the natural reasons. Apart from that, uh, there are also man-made reasons where the uh, we can say the there is no I mean the uh, canals which uh, canals or the rivers which like Mithi River are encroached by various fronts by the infrastructure development we can say. Also, some low basin area is also there where low lying area is there which is frequently get flooded. For example, uh, the King Circle in the Mata. We, it is frequently flooded, and also the man-made reason Sound. is that the sewage, or we can say the uh, canals or the rivers, are not get clean uh, regularly. So these are the okay. You uh, you did a project on participatory budgeting. Yes. Now can you explain what is participatory budgeting? What is it? Yes. So participatory budgeting is a process where people directly. Uh, Directly provide their suggestions to, let's say, municipal corporation about their what they want. So people directly have a say on how to spend their part of public money. So this is one thing. Also, uh, the social audit part is also there, where people review. People means who? The corporations. No, the, the, the citizens of that particular uh, municipal corporations. Directly. So how did you? Say, Mumbai is a very very big. A municipal corporation. Yes, sir. How would they, uh, uh, you know, access to so many people? Yes, sir. Sir, I think uh, <coughs> even the Maharashtra <coughs> Municipal Corporation Act uh, has mentioned various provisions for the people's participation. Also, Mumbai released the development plan for 2034, where wide stakeholder level consultation of directly the people has been done. So there are various ways through which people consultation is taken. First is the suggestion. Okay, consultation forms. can be done after yes. you draft a budget, maybe, yes. and uh, put it on the website. Invite objections, suggestions, etc. Yes. But how how will people otherwise participate in the formulation of the budget itself? Yes, sir. So right now we have various technological uh, we can say solutions for that. We can have some kind of app where people will directly suggest whatever they uh, their suggestions are. So one is technological. Second thing is uh, the <coughs> board offices are very much accessible to the people. So people can directly pour up to either section at the board offices mm -hmm. level. Also, we can have a uh, we can say okay. the direct interaction of people and councillor. Okay. So that, yes, okay. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now uh, there is a serious problem about under trials. Yes. Right? You must have read about it uh, very recently. Prime Minister and CJI uh, also expressed concern about it. Yes, sir. Uh, what can be done to eliminate this problem or to reduce it substantially? Sir, one thing is speedy uh, justice delivery. Sorry. It is. It is very easy to say, but very difficult to achieve. Yes, sir. But sir, certainly we will have uh, when we will. Provide some solution at the Kendra 
at a holistic criminal justice level like we can say the investigation is uh, speed up or we can say uh, the time between the uh, two, two sittings of court can be reduced or something like that so that we will have the steady dispute resolution but courts are so heavily burdened yes the, the time between two hearings of the same case it can hardly be brought down unless the person itself himself is very very influential yes sir so we can have sir there is also judicial vacancy the vacancies are huge so we must ensure that vacancies are get filled up at the subordinate level also so that uh, it will have more it will have only very marginal impact because the speed which you mentioned just now is very very slow speed of disposal itself is slow yes sir sir but we must intervene at various levels to ensure that what did the prime minister suggest about it sorry sir i don't <coughs> thank you sir okay rohan now some people say that politics of a nation depends on its economics do you agree with that yes sir certainly <coughs> sir sir economics uh, provides avenues for development and ultimately when people see development is happening they it turns that turns out to be a good politics also like okay. uh, yeah so going further on that you come from the financial capital of india so what are the you know what you can say uh, basic standards of financial health of india so i think uh, the first is the growth country must have substantial amount of growth so that it can it can be translated into a development mm -hmm. second thing is uh, debt levels you can say the fiscal deficit is one of the marker of nation's financial health mm -hmm. thank you uh, third thing is uh, you can say the level of savings and investment and the you can say the multiplier effect mm -hmm. from which the when the government expenditure is increased how it translates into a higher level of growth so these are the four things i think that and uh, considering the banking level since we have a good banking sector also, mm -hmm. the spa level or non performing asset such uh, such criteria must be uh, seen so to ensure that healthy finance so how will you be a figure in on those you know parameters sir uh, we are in the recovery uh, since we have faced the covid induced lockdown and other even the russia ukraine war is going on so slow down is faced by the every economy but india has seen we have seen that some signs of the recovery like gst collection can say it is which is increasing we are seeing that growth prospects are also quite uh, positive we can say uh, as compared to other emerging countries so these are the two things but sir there are few things uh, which we must take care like the health indicators or the development indicators even the recent two days report nfhs uh, survey has said that uh, the 83% children do not get adequate meals so such things we must ensure that we must be we acquire growth we we have growth along with the development part also yeah you said one word inclusive recovery what yes, do you sir. mean by that sir uh, inclusive recovery means that the every stakeholder of the country must get benefited from that growth and they must uh, they must contribute what it is called in economics what do we call this in economics sir we call it inclusive growth distributive justice yes sir sorry sir so how do you achieve distributive justice sir uh, distributive justice can be allow, uh, achieved through we can say the uh, redistribution which we can say that uh, we can have a solidarity tax or something like that to tax a rich 1% and uh, redistribute that money to a poor through direct benefit transfer yeah very good state that yes sir we tax the rich and we distribute yes. to the poor yes sir so that we are doing but still we are not able to achieve that you know what we call distributive justice yes, sir sir uh, there are few things in taxation policy itself which need to be formed like uh, there must be more identification and targeting should be good 
second thing is uh, the tax expenditure the exemption cut to given to the various sector it is also quite large so we can ensure that such such things are uh, reformed and uh, the benefit is transferred to people correct okay tell me which is the oldest book in economics ever written sir i am not aware of whether it is exact oldest or not but i think the artha shastra by kautil is one of the oldest book good okay. what was the name of the book of amritya sen on which he wrote his nobel prize that was something to do with economy yes sir sir uh, i think it uh, it is a development as a freedom yes development as yes sir good and what is the book called the invisible hand and who wrote it sir uh, it is uh, the invisible hand concept was discussed by adam smith mm-hmm. in his book wealth of nation you know it's a separate book wealth of nation is separate book this is a separate book so what is this invisible hand sir uh, basically invisible hands are the forces uh, which pro- which act to promote growth and what are those forces sir we can say the expectations part is one of the invisible hands forces of demand and supply in the market yes sir so the market sir. forces yes sir of demand and supply yes sir okay now my last question is In Sri Lanka, the government has fallen because of economic reasons. Yes. And in our country also, we are, to some extent, heading to in that direction. A lot of free beach argument. Yes. So, sir. do you think we should have some sort of uh, legislation or some sort of, you know, a provision in under which these are regulated? So certainly the free beers part need to be regulated for better targeting, but uh, the regulation must not be a uh, regulation must be uh, we can say light regulation where the uh, when whenever the free beers are provided to the higher income uh, people, they must there must be some give it give it up clause like we in the LPG cylinder we have the give it up campaign so we can regulate on that front. Also second thing sir uh, free beers. we cannot completely uh, no, you give 300 units of electricity free yes. do you think uh, your electricity companies can sustain that kind of expenditure so you almost 50% of your customers are not paying sir consider uh, certainly sir the <coughs> companies are at uh, we can say stress uh, only stress can do it heavily dead burden now yes sir dead burden also and they can decrypt, declare bankruptcy very soon then what will happen to the power sector yes sir sir uh, the the state government itself taking care of that and state government is pushing money into the discounts we can say the uday scheme was one of that the where the discounts of the uday scheme is what yes the debt is yes. in the mountain yes so there must be some rationalization of the populist policies like Uh, sir, you mentioned the uh, 300 units free beer. We can say that, sir, we can provide some. Uh, we can say direct benefit transfer to a poor, or we can say micro enterprises which are running or uh, using. Yeah, welfare economics is part of it, but it yes. cannot exceed beyond the limit. Yes, which can actually stress the budget and the disturb yes. the financial health of the country. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. suppose you are selected for indian police service <clears throat> what three important changes you would like to make sir first is the accessibility part once well, i must be i mean as a police i must be accessible to people so people can share their grievances to various fronts like we have seen that even some police officer are using twitter as a source of accessibility so certain you know to step second thing second thing is uh, sir vulnerable sections where the crime reporting is very low like women we can say in, uh, in also in case of the domestic violence so there must be some degree of anonymity also uh, those who are suffering they must be uh, we can say accessible or they must put their complaint directly to a police station with maintaining their anonymity part so such thing i can do also third thing is 
sir police force itself is very less resourceful so there must be some avenues for them to motivate them or to provide some uh, innovative uh, we can say human resource development of the police force you know that's the most important one the police in india is perceived to be very corrupt and very yes. arrogant sir uh, certainly sir when, when the police so officer why, said why you see why talking about the less police force and you see all other things you will be joining the mainstream in the police force sir i think the uh, the corruption is also about one thing is yes there are the, uh, real cases where we are seeing an investigation also going on i think it is itself an achievement of our policing system where the police if where it shows that the no one is about them and due process of law is followed so, so there, there is, is a, there is corruption or there is no corruption in place sir i think there <coughs> are several instances which are also going inquiries also going on and also found that that corruption is present uh, in various part but every system i mean all system is not corrupt and it is a good system of itself system itself that that corruption is uh, surface above and the due process of law followed and how, how you will how you will control <coughs> corruption uh, the asset declaration of the police force can be a good step second thing uh, there must be <coughs> a separate mechanism of speedy redressal of the corruption cases of the police force itself police force itself also the prakashin judgment has said that there must be police complaint authority so some more institutionalizing the complaints for can be that is beyond your jurisdiction uh, that is not your area you can't do this yes sir but things which are actually within your competence which you can introduce yes. <coughs> we are talking about that sir uh, in if it is in in capacity of me as a new police service officer then sir first thing is that there must be some uh, vigilance must be ensured that the my subordinates of the police uh, of police station which is under my own jurisdiction so these are very general sort of things nothing new in that yes sir something you know we by which you can reduce the corruption there are ways yes sir sir i can provide some innovative solutions like app like there is also where people will share think about that corrupt. think about that yes sir thank you sir now <clears throat> give us some examples of good politics but bad economics so the populist policy <clears throat> like sir mentioned previous the good politics but uh, when it is not targeted well and uh, it it turns out to be a bad economic any other example so uh, so we can say the repeal of the farm laws we can say because it, there was some political capital associated with it so we did a repeal of that act so repealing of that was good politics or framing the those were good politics sir i think uh, <coughs> the economics and politics go hand in hand but there is a issue of timeline economics need some short term pain you know, know which where where you find the good part good politics yes sir so the, the framing of the laws or repealing the laws so the framing of the law is the frame, sir framing is the law is a good economic but there impact no no good politics first sir yes sir the good politics so it will be a good politics in long run if government uh, shows and no, no, no. framing of law was good politics or repealing of the laws was good politics Sir, considering the given situation, repealing of the law was done due to the political capital issue itself. So, so it is a good politics. politics, but in the long run, run it can be a bad politics because yes. bad economics. Sir, sir, I couldn't able to give bad economics. Good politics. You have given the example. Now give the example of bad economics. Yes, sir, sir, uh, bad economics. We can say the economic development at the cost of environment that we take. Like say a bridge, uh, constructing a bridge by topping of the trees or topping of the mountains, which is uh, has a great ecological value, and without doing it in a sustainable way, that is a good economy, a bad economy in the long run. Also, using coal as an immediate source of energy. But that bridge will actually provide a lot of access to the industries, lot of development of that area. 
So it certainly so it will provide access in the short run, but in the long run, how you will how will how you will view the prohibition? Prohibition, prohibition. Sir, I think it's <coughs> prohibition associated with the. I mean, what exactly the prohibition? I mean, the prohibition associated with any good politics for bad economics. Okay, sir. So it's uh, good economics, but bad good politics, but bad economics. So what he is saying is, is, is prohibition a good example of good politics but bad economics? Prohibition policy. Yes, sorry, sir. Sir, uh, it is a <coughs> good example of, I mean, we can say that those who are, uh, it is a bad economics because the revenue side is get affected due to the prohibition on the liquor part where the excise duties and other uh, taxes, uh, bad, we can say, this state derived. So it is a bad economics, certainly. But uh, sometimes uh, few people demand that. In Maharashtra, we have the law that where 75% of villagers will demand prohibition. Then it is get up, uh, implemented. Uh, where the state also provides that it is prohibited. In but particular tell region. whether that, that is relevant here or not. The good politics and bad economics is relevant in prohibition policy or not. Sir, I think uh, when people demand it is if people demand prohibition, it can be a good politics, we can say. And it can be a bad economics since the revenue impact which we can see. Oh, okay. thank you. Yes, thank you, sir. Rohan. Yes, sir. Uh, economics. Yes, sir. So economic growth is currently <coughs> service led. Yes? yes can we sustain it? Ma'am, uh, I can say that uh, it is a service-led growth, but the jobs and other uh, jobs are not rising vis-a-vis the growth <coughs> since we are experiencing this what is called as a jobless growth. So ultimately, people will have their grievances. People will be there. Will, there is a possibility of social tensions and other things. Also, uh, can we sustain it yes, so, without subtracting or <coughs> adding something to the service sector? Ma'am, uh, in the longer run, we say we cannot sustain it because uh, people will. Uh, I mean, the translation of that growth to the, we can say, the uh, various sectors of the economy is not uh, that uh, effective as compared to the labor intensive manufacturing rate growth. Yeah. So we will have to add the manufacturing sector because, in any case, in agriculture, we have a lot of seasonal and unemployment. Yeah. So that's it. Yes. Now, finance bills are introduced in which house of parliament? Ma'am. Uh, Finance bills, which are the Article 117 Clause 1, are introduced. Also, the Article 110 uh, are introduced in Lok Sabha only, or in it can be introduced both in the upper house and the lower house. Uh, Ma'am, it is introduced in Lok Sabha only. Only and the Article 117 Clause okay. 2 is also introduced. In now, uh, what kind of a recovery can we expect in India? V shape, U shape, K shape. Ma'am, uh, there are signs of the K shape recovery. Uh, because the growth part, there is there are projections which are also 7.9% by IMF and 8.2% by World Bank. Also. So that is a considerable amount of growth. But the other indicators, which are the development indicators, all the recovery among the MSME sector is projected very low. Also, the health indicators uh, are quite low, like the recent NFHS I will say that. So this itself shows that. We are experiencing growth induced by some larger corporate bodies or some larger groups, but it is not uh, translating to a deeper level. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, what are cyclical curves? <coughs> Sorry, I cyclical you. curves. What are cyclical curves? Can you tell me the shape of the cyclical? Yes. Then you'll be able to understand what. Ma'am, uh, the cyclical curves are like depression. Uh, then there is a sign of uh, recovery, we can say. And there is a growth period, there is a boom period, then again there is a slowdown, then there is again recession and then depression. So this is the one cycle. Cyclical curves. Okay. Now, if I say, uh, currently we are in the process of overhauling the Macaulay uh, system of education. Does it mean we are saf saffronizing education in the country? Ma'am, uh, we cannot say that we are saffronizing it. Because uh, the even the there are various components of the new new education policy also like the uh, we have this uh, foundational learning then there is a 
uh, we can say the continuous form of learning. Also, the three language formula which we have, but we have made it optional to choose the third language. So these are steps which makes it inclusive, and uh, it is not certainly a natural language. Okay, is Hindi our national language? Ma'am, Hindi is our official language, not national. Language. Not not the national language. Okay, now. Uh, the 500 rupee note have you looked at it carefully yes ma'am okay so what is uh, which uh, uh, monument is there at the back of the 500 rupee note on the front is father of the nation yes but on the back ma'am i think it is rani ki Bhai, which is in gujarat no on 200 rupees sorry ma'am i'm not able to record rani ki Bhai is on 100 rupees Oh, sorry. A 500 is red fort. Just have a look at all yes, these things. Sorry. Okay. Now, you were talking of freebies. What's the difference between freebies and subsidies? Ma'am, freebies are direct provision of goods or direct provision of benefited countries. Whereas, subsidy is a uh, form of uh, expenditure is carried by the government. And the form of expenditure is carried by the ultimate consumer of the country. City. So, it is shared. Sir, so, uh, sorry, ma'am. Ma sometimes it is given as a hundred percent subsidy. Sometimes it is shared. And where are hundred percent subsidies? One or two examples. Ma'am, uh, in Maharashtra we have this uh, Krushi pump yojana, where the Krushi pump hundred percent subsidy is given to procure the Krushi pump for the small farmer. Okay. So why not just go and distribute it free? Ma'am, then it will have uh, some fiscal cost, and targeting will be restrict. I mean, targeting will be after that, and uh, Fiscal cost will be higher, and also the poorest of the poor or those who are in at the need uh, will not get benefited from it at the most. Time. And also, it will give. Why will they not benefit from it? You are just distributing something free. Yes, ma'am. But so they will not accept it. But ma'am, they will accept it. But instead of you, instead of universalizing it, if we target it, then we will have uh, I mean lower fiscal cost with that. Saving, we can provide them um, some additional avenues or additional savings also to improve okay. their capability. Okay. Thank, yes. thank you, ma'am. So, Rohan, we will take you back to the waiting room for a while. Yes. Just stay there, don't go away. We'll call you again for your feedback. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Come. First of all, let me tell you, you don't have to ask for permission. You just have to knock. And someone will open the door for you. Yes. Have a seat. Thank you. Uh, Rohan, uh, when is your interview fixed? It's 20th of May, 4th. 20th of May, 4th. And uh, first time you are appearing at the CSE? Yes. Okay. And um, how many mocks have you attended before this? Sir, I gave six mocks. Six mocks. Yes. And how many mocks do you have? Still to go? Sir, uh, there is one scheduled. One more okay. scheduled. Okay, so eight marks will be there. Yes. So Rohan, first of all, your own impression about your performance here. What's your opinion? Sir, I think it was average, I can say. Because you don't have to be so pessimistic about it. You are very good. Okay. So having said that, there are one or two areas. First of all, I'll talk about your strengths. Your knowledge and control uh, and um, assimilation of economics is very good. Your knowledge about the election process was very good and some of the very interesting questions uh, you know which uh, in which you came out with very good answers that is proactive reactive and inactive again and the flood situation in maharashtra also you had a very good knowledge about that so uh, overall your performance is very good and uh, now just to come to some of the areas first of all you must have uh, uh, entire knowledge about maharashtra so particularly with reference to the you know the but one thing which I will flag here is corruption in Maharashtra. The recent arrest of the minister and the DGP spat and all those things which happened. So the corruption will definitely is a part of, you know. So that is where you should prepare. Now coming to the important thing, the parameters and this. So about agriculture, industry, history of Maharashtra, Shivaji and you know, the entire history of Maharashtra and uh, the, the power sector, the irrigation potential, the industry, then the, the then the culture of Maharashtra, yes. and also uh, the the fact if you supposing you have to uh, attract foreign investment, then how will you you know how will you sell your Maharashtra? 
So that also you should have all the strengths, the industrial policy and other things. Read through that. It is all available on Google. You will have been able to get it. So anything and everything about Maharashtra, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunity and threats. Prepare them very well under these four headings. Now coming to uh, some other areas, uh, for example, uh, your hobbies. So cooking, podcasts on uh, cricket, budgeting. And uh, one particular thing which you talked about was participative budgeting, yes. which you said. Now, that is one area which is a, an area where you need to prepare very well because there may be many questions to be taken on that. Okay, prepare that well. And your communication skills are excellent. Everything is fine. Your choice of uh, words, sentences, everything. Just one thing you have to. And there are three uh, things which I am going to say. One is brevity is the wit. Okay. Less is more and need to know basis. Don't drop such words which can invite you further questions or supplementaries. Only what is necessary to be told to the panel, only that you should say. So these three things, if you follow, you will be able to come out very well. All right. Now, uh, coming to some of the specific areas, I would like you to st uh, study just by way of having an overall well-rounded personality. One is about the constitution, go through the constitution, everything about that. Fundamental rights, preamble, fundamental duties, even the writ, what are the remedies available, directive principle, state policy, election of the president is likely to be held, yes, is very shortly, and then vice president, the role of the prime minister, and then along the all the articles, bear constitution read, so as to have a, how a new state is created, and so all everything is given there. Then read the public policy making process, how a public policy is ultimately, you know, formulated, implemented and evaluated. So, there is a six step policy cycle. So, if you open any book on public policy, then I can name, for example, book by Dai. It is an excellent book. Hollett is an excellent book. So, but here your time is not very, uh, very much on your side. So, uh, you should only uh, see the public policy cycle. And if possible, the public policy models, if possible. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then uh, also understand what are the public policies which have been framed since India's independence. We are talking about, uh, you know, Amrit Mahotsav. So, 70 policies that shaped India, that is a book which is available on the internet. Just open that book and you will have a good idea about 70. Nationalization of banks. By yes, or, or absolutely correct. So you have you have that knowledge. Then also read ten judgments that change India. Nariman's daughter, I think she had written that book. Okay, so uh, that will give you fairly good. then current affairs. Current affairs you have to prepare for the domestic as well as international. So anything and everything. For example, the the Punjab police showdown with Haryana police and Delhi police regarding Mr. Bagga or Prime Minister's visit to the European nations, yes. or for that matter, situation in Sri Lanka, Pakistan, okay. So, all the general knowledge questions, before you enter the room, read through the newspaper, so that you have a good knowledge about it. You can even go uh, see some of the magazines, and also some of the YouTube videos, for example, Shekhar Gupta and others, they, they have uh, a very good presentation to make. Then, one more thing I would like to do is, the economy is your strong point, you already know about it. But read about the budget speech, what are the essential points of the budget speech and the privatization of PSUs. So PSUs role in nation building and their privatization. Then the, the foreign policy, you should prepare extremely well. Uh, and then good governance and citizen centric administration, <coughs> ethics and values and the skills which are needed for a civil servant. Okay. So this is about all. And uh, I think if you go through this this much in, you will be able to face every question. Okay. If you have any question to ask, you can ask us. Sir, I think sometimes uh, maybe due to board, maybe uh, distance between us and board that UPSC and so sometimes we can't hear. I mean, there is a difficulty in hearing few words. You can always request for repeating the question. Yes, there will be a mask between you and the board yes, ordinarily. Yes. So you have to speak slightly loudly because of the mask, but otherwise your communication skills are very good. Your articulation is very good, choice of sentences is very good, your modulation, everything is par excellence. Your knowledge also 
regarding this topics which I have said, it is very good. And your the way of your answering questions is also very good, except that brevity is the wit. And just one general principle I am going to tell you. One is always back up your answers with examples. So, examples will always strengthen your answer. Secondly, if there is a controversial question, like for example, demonetization <coughs> or it can be uh, Article 370, it can even be hij a hijab constitution. You know controversy it can be a controversy which is in the news many controversies are in the news and it can be surgical strike it can be caa so always <coughs> give both the sides <coughs> rather than sticking to one prince one side give both the side and if they say well you don't have any your opinion then you give the official side do not go again it is not a place where you should take risks yes. interview is a very serious business and 22 minutes you should not in any case enter into an unknown turf unnecessarily you the, the one of the panelists may take umbrage to anything follow the official side and if there is a court judgment follow the court judgment for example in hijab there is a court judgment ayodhya there is a court judgment there are many such area so they will make your answer very safe yes. okay and uh, lastly whenever you give answers always give in the order of priority the most important part of the question should come first and then you will automatically move to the next question. You will say, all right, you're fine. We'll go to the next question. If you can take as many questions as possible, very good. Last question which you take, uh, I know it is not within anyone's control, but that question you should be able to answer because that is a parting thing before you are leaving the room. So try to do that. In case sometimes the chairman also asks that, uh, would you like us to ask any particular question in any field? If you have done extremely well then you don't have to ask say anything you said thank you very much but in case you feel that uh, you can uh, dwell in another area where you are very strong there you can say that sir uh, I, I have prepared on this and if you like to ask the question on that so that the ending should be the best okay as you are very good i'm sure you will do extremely well you will get very good high marks okay all the best to you we would like to see you as a civil servant thank you 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 th